All right, so it turns out instead of using HBr for both primary and secondary alcohols, uh, there's an alternative, and that's using PBr3 here. Uh, in this case, it only works for primary and secondary alcohols because it goes through an SN2 mechanism. Uh, you can't do SN2 on a tertiary carbon, so that's why you can't use this with tertiary alcohols. But for primary and secondary alcohols, it's a great alternative. Uh, and in this case, it always goes SN2. There's no this debate, is it SN1 or is it SN2? It's always SN2. Uh, and in this case, being SN2, if it happens at a chiral center, you do have to worry about inversion of configuration as I've got diagrammed right here. Uh, let's kind of take a look at how the mechanism works here. So first step is your alcohol is going to come and attack phosphorus, causing one of the bromines to leave. So your phosphorus is still bonded to two bromines, and then you still have another bromide ion now floating around as well. Uh, and in this case, this is where the pyridine comes in. Notice pyridine, I've kind of got diagrammed on the far right here. So and pyridine is kind of a classic weak base we use in some of the reactions in this chapter, as well as maybe a couple others. So it looks like benzene, except it's got a nitrogen in there. So and being a weak base, its job is to come and deprotonate. Proton transfer here, pull off that hydrogen. So and the big reason we're doing all this here is that whereas an OH back here is a bad leaving group, as we just talked about, this big group right here is now a decent leaving group. And our bromide ion we just formed a second ago can come in and do backside attack, SN2, leading to inversion of configuration to give our final product. So that's kind of how that reaction works. That's why it's SN2. Uh, you should definitely know it is SN2. You should definitely know it only works for primary and secondary alcohols. Uh, and it is a mechanism most classes would be generally responsible for. Uh, the reaction we're about to cover with SOCl2 is very, very similar. Let's take a look. All right, so here's the reaction with SOCl2. Uh, this is going to do a substitution replacing the OH with a chlorine. Uh, it also goes by an SN2 mechanism, and that's why this one also only works for primary and secondary alcohols. You cannot use it with a tertiary alcohol here. Uh, but a great alternative to HCl, uh, it only goes SN2, uh, so you're always going to get inversion of configuration if it's happening at a chiral center, as the example I've got here. Uh, some people memorize this as so cool too, or something like that. I've heard that. Uh, but this is one that it's actually worth knowing the name of as well. So SOCl2 is called thionyl chloride. When you see thio in a name, you know that that compound has sulfur in it. Uh, so this is thionyl chloride, and oftentimes people just say, you know, uh, instead of writing out SOCl2, they might write out the name thionyl chloride. So kind of annoying, but definitely one worth knowing. You might also just see the structure here. And uh, down below, I've got the structure of SOCl2, so we can kind of see how the mechanism works. Uh, but works in principle very similar to what we saw with PBr3. So first step is your alcohol is going to come and do nucleophilic attack on the sulfur atom. So it turns out those electrons that just, the pi electrons that went up to the oxygen, they actually come right back down and kick off one of the chlorines. And you might be like, why doesn't this just happen in two steps? Um, and you're going to have to take up that beef with nature. That's just the way it works. Uh, but we do know that it happens in two steps. And this will be a pattern you see quite a bit. In fact, we already saw it once in this chapter. Oh, and I forgot my plus charge here. But now we also have this chloride ion floating around that can do backside attack here in a little bit. Uh, and just like we saw in the last reaction, we're also using pyridine here. And so again, using it for the same purpose as well. It's just going to be a weak base here. And so pyridine is going to come in and deprotonate. I'm having some trouble here. You know what I mean. So we're going to deprotonate there. getting this structure right here. And again, whereas an OH is a bad leaving group, this lovely group is now a good leaving group, and the chloride ion we released a minute ago can now come and do backside attack. And that leads us to our final product right here. 
So that's the reaction with SOCl2, and again, very, very similar to what we saw with PBr3. And technically, in some classes, they even teach the reaction with PCl3, and that's exactly this analogous to PBr3, uh, and also replaces an OH with a chlorine. So if you got that, great. Uh, but most classes probably aren't going to learn that one, so I'm not going to take the time to present it.